Hey everybody, welcome to Metro Scene. I'm Marvin Jackson. We are here at Arena Stage where August Wilson's Jitney is playing. In a moment, you'll meet some of the cast members. So don't go away. Metro Scene is up next. Jitney is important to today's audiences and yesterday's audiences and tomorrow audiences because the opportunity to see people of color wanting, needing, and achieving everything that's called the American dream. Because all of August's plays contain people that look like you and me, people of color, trying to attain the most simple of life's values, freedom, liberty, justice, equality. You shouldn't have to fight for those things. God gave you that. In every one of August's plays, that's what we're fighting for. We're at Arena Stage, and I am with Ray Anthony Thomas. And right. uh, he is Turnbow, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite uh, characters in Jitney, which is playing right here at Arena Stage. And I'm hearing now that you've done this, this play several times, Yeah, this right? is the fourth character I've played in, in, oh. this, in this show, okay. not in this particular show, but mm -hmm. I've done, you know, six different productions. So okay. uh, I played uh, The Numbers Man a couple times, I played <laughs> Fillmore a couple times, mm -hmm. I played Becca once, mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm playing Turnbull. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you could have written this thing. Well, huh? you, know. You, know, <laughs> you know the script. I huh? feel like I've, I've memorized half of it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about Turnbull. What is it about him that makes him... You so know, I, it's, everybody seems to identify mm -hmm. with him, you know, he, he mm -hmm. seems to be that, that person who seems to know everything, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and if you want to find out what's going on in the community, there's that person. You don't know how they get the information, mm -hmm. you don't know what they had to do to get it, but they always got what you need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and my take on him is he's, he's, there's, he's not particularly malicious or anything like that, but I feel like he, he's a curious person. Uh, he, he, he's a caring person, mm -hmm. and that's probably why he's so, my wife would say, I'm, I'm just concerned. I'm not nosy, I'm concerned, you know? Yeah. No, nah. oh, boy, ain't nobody studying you. Mm, champ dad. Yeah, I done told you who you playing with now. Can't nobody beat me. I'm like Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest. Young brother. Let me have four dollars, I got to go. Well, come on and move, checker champ. I must say, it's very, uh, it's very much a fun character to play. I'm having a good time doing it. And you yeah. were saying a lot of people relate to that it character. Seems like it. A, it seems like There are a lot of turnbows out here. Huh? Well, you know, I get a lot of, you know, you mind your own business now. <laughs> Don't make me come over there, you know, that kind of stuff as you're walking mm -hmm. down the street. But mm -hmm. uh, um, he's an, uh, an important driving force within the play because a lot of stuff seems to start with the information he has, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. All right, and are there any particular characters that you like to play in Jitney, or you like doing them all? Well, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed playing Becker. Um, okay. Not as much fun as the other characters, mm -hmm. though, because he, he's the one that really carries yeah. the load. He has all mm -hmm. the heavy lifting, uh, emotionally, I think. Mm -hmm more than anything else. Um, um, I, I did like playing Fillmore because of his um, simple outlook on life mm -hmm. and the way he enjoys his free time when he's not working. He's a hard working man, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, and uh, and Sheely, of course, you know, what can you say about Sheely? You know, he's mm -hmm. the number Oh man. my goodness, <laughs> Okay, yeah. he probably knows mm -hmm. as much as Turnbull, you right, know. Right. But he gathers his information mm -hmm. another way, you right. know. But I had a chance to uh, go up on the hill mm -hmm. uh, and see the Jitney station that was that he based this play on. 
um, and the fellas, and it, this stage is bigger than the joint that, You're that kidding. you know, wow. the place was like a storefront, mm -hmm. you know, and it had, it had a pay phone, mm -hmm. it had three or four seats around, and then it had all these cars outside, you know, on, parked on the curb, mm -hmm. and all the cats are like, you see them, they're, they're you know, shining in their car or, mm -hmm. or cleaning out the trunk or, you know, or they're just sitting there reading the paper in their car, you know, just waiting for the call. Mm -hmm. um, the person who took me up there uh, locked his keys in the car. And so he wanted to, maybe the Jitney joint had a Jimmy bar. So, <laughs> and no one wanted to talk to him until he, he mentioned August. He said, well, you know, I, I, was, I was an acquaintance of August and I had this, this person here who just wanted to come see some of the places he wrote about. Mm -hmm. And everybody went, oh, Little Red? Oh, mm -hmm. you knew Little Red? All right, the next thing you know, he's got his keys out the car, you know. Um, August seems to, to carry a lot of goodwill up on the hill, you know, because they, they were so proud of, of, of the fact that there was someone writing about their lives, mm -hmm. you know. As someone said, you know, he's, he's made kings out of garbage men, you know. Uh, he, he's responsible for caring forth our stories. And um, people take pride in knowing that their culture is being represented on stage. So uh, we, we do owe August that much, at least. And being the great writer he is, we probably owe him more than we can really give back to him, mm -hmm. you know? You and uh, Youngblood, you guys, mm -hmm have a lot going on <laughs> you know yeah in this play and um, talk about that that relationship with you and him and uh, you know of course you kind of try to break it up between him and Rena well, who, yeah. you know <laughs> we're gonna be talking to but yeah, uh, yeah talk about that and there's a very powerful scene in here um, I'm still trying to sort it out and mm -hmm. I probably always will mm -hmm. but uh, I feel like there's a little bit of uh, envy coming from Turnbow toward Youngblood, because mm -hmm. Youngblood, you know, he, he, he was a Vietnam vet. He went over there, did some fighting. Uh, seems like he's trying to get his life together. He's on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, but Turnbow can only see what he sees. So and what he sees is, is, is Youngblood g going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's trying to help his girl, uh, uh, young blood's girlfriend, Rena, see the light, so to speak. <laughs> um, I'm trying not to give away too much plot because mm, right. y'all got to come exactly. see the show. They got to come. But see uh, this. Um, yeah. and it it does come to a head mm -hmm. once or twice. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. but you know the the craft of of August is you see it, you kind of see it being laid down, mm -hmm. and then when it when it bursts yeah. forth, you go, oh my goodness, yeah. I didn't know it was gonna go that far, kind yeah. of thing. So. Yeah, like you said, he kind of starts laying it out there yeah. early. and Suitably then, cryptic, but, yes. you know, like I said, come see the show, y'all. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So so tell me uh, about this cast. I mean, uh, you guys seem to get along very well, well and that's I, important, right? The, the advantage of it is I, I've worked with, you know, mm -hmm. most of these guys before, um, and it feels like you're coming home, mm -hmm. you know, to be surrounded by all these people who are, consummate actors, consummate Wilsonian actors. Uh, we have a couple of new faces coming in who are, who are just as adroit, just as skillful. So um, I'm looking forward to the rest of the tour. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm so happy to be here, I, I, I can't describe wow. it. Wow, okay. So. And, and you're, a, you're an actor who goes way back to your college days. Yeah. You, yeah. you studied math and then you <laughs> decided to go over to, to yeah, acting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk about that, how you got into acting and, and um, that kind of thing. Well, and what I, acting means to you as, as a person. Well, when, when I first started acting, I, I realized I, I was doing it, you know, most, you know, mostly for the girls, you know. <laughs> uh, but then when I got to college, I was, I was a math major. My parents said, you know, this, this acting stuff is fun, but it ain't gonna put food on the table kind of thing. But then I got a chance to do a show with, with Andy Devine. Remember Andy Devine? Uh, and he was, you know, I, got, I introduced him to my dad and after that acting was all right, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and then I realized I did want to pursue it a little, a little heavier. So I, I switched my major over to a double major between math and drama. Um, and I, I was lucky, whilst in college, I got a chance to work 
around El Paso in, in the different paying venues. And then when I got out of college, I just moved straight to New York, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I was lucky enough to get my equity card within four months, mm -hmm. um, followed by two years of not being able to get arrested. But then all of a sudden things started picking up and, and I've been doing pretty well since then. You know, I find acting to be the one thing in this world that I do better than most anything else. Um, I'm, I get a lot of, of uh, gratification out of being responsible to the life I produce on stage. You know, uh, it's almost like it's almost like a sacred calling to me. I, I don't know how to describe it any more than that. It's almost like, you know, I'm a monk and I'm going out in the world and I'm trying to do good deeds, you know? Yeah. That's so what it feels like to me. What's it like at curtain call time? It depends. Sometimes I'm so zenned out and relaxed and other times I'm so nervous and I can't, I can't figure out why some nights I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm going to escape through this. And other times, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen tonight kind of thing. But and that's the it, beauty of it, mm -hmm. you know. And then at the end know. of the performance, you're... At the end of the performance, hopefully, I just feel, feel good. I feel okay. like, you know, I left everything up there. I needed yeah. to leave up there. And, um, you know, and it's, sometimes I'm tired, and it's a good kind of tired. You know, mm -hmm. it's emotional, mental. It's all that stuff, you mm -hmm. know, hopefully. And doing August Wilson's work? If it weren't for August, there were times when I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had any work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, every character of his that I've played, I find so rewarding. Um, there's a couple times when, you know, after I get through with the production, I don't want to do nothing else for a mm -hmm. while, you know? Um, I can't do that often because I got to, you know, mm -hmm pay the rent and stuff, but um, I, I find it so rewarding that uh, I, there's nothing else I want to do sometimes, right. you know? And I, I have given up some more lucrative work in order to do an August Wilson play, All right. you know? All right, man. Thanks yeah. so much for joining us on oh, Metro bet. Scene. Ray Anthony Thomas. All three of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. we'll be right back. Oh man, you were in the circle. You were in there now, man. Oh, you were you in there. I was like, yeah. I, was, I, I, I kind of from then. So Coming like, up, yeah. Jitney cast members, Nigel Okoro and Brian D. Coates. When Metro Scene returns. I, I would like to call myself a Wilsonian. I will. Maybe I'll start saying it. But you know, it's because I'm still in awe of everyone like that have come you know what I mean like Felicia and Ruben and you know and um and Chiz Anthony Chisholm and just all these wonderful wonderful people that I just still I don't know I, but I think I'll I think I'll be 85 still talking about I don't know yet if I can call myself <laughs> you know I mean you know because <laughs> at this point I, I I've been in in more plays than I've seen, Wilson plays than I've seen. So Chisholm, Four. He's, he's done a lot, huh? Chisholm. Oh, yeah. He's a bad dude in this. Ooh, I mean, he's, he's beautiful. beautiful. He's, <laughs> he's just beautiful. Yeah. Every one of my people who comes to see the play, mm. they can find almost nothing to talk about, but that, mm. it's like, is he really? Yeah, I mean, it's like he's really back there taking a nip or something. Is he really yeah. like, mm. like <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, he's, it's brilliant. He's, so you can't it's almost that. like perfect. Yeah. It's, no, I don't see how anybody could play it any better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm understudying it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no pressure. Talk about something. No pressure, pressure, right? <laughs>